Hey guys, how are you? So smart developers, inspiring developers should be looking into chat GPT on a regular basis, at least two, three times a week, pop, pop into it, start asking it questions, ask it to write some code, ask it questions about software development. Maybe you have a certain concept that's confusing to you. See what it says, see what it could do. The key here, uh, well, number one, you're gonna get the benefit of asking these questions. And number two, you're gonna start understanding the system. I think that AI assistive tools, let me underline that, assisted, assistive tools, are going to be an important tool in the day-to-day -day work of any developer out there if you're smart if you want to get ahead don't make the mistake i made back in the 90s in my first two years of writing java code i wanted to be a hardcore java guy and i would not even use an ide an integrated development environment i would just use notepad it's just a text editor and i would write out all my java code and then i would use the command line javac i would compile my classes when I finally acquiesced and said, okay, you know, I'm going to use, I should use an ID, you know, come on. It's good. It improved my productivity huge. And I think that chat uh, engines like chat GPT or whatever else comes out, AI code completion tools that you see out there like Copilot and there are several others, you'd be smart to take advantage of these things. If you look at history, history is, is, shows example after example after example of people who were able to uh, get ahead of the curve, get ahead of most people, and start leveraging new technology uh, to their advantage before other people. So you should be using this tool. I'll give you a, a funny example. So I had a friend of mine who worked at a very a major bank, head office, and one of the guys who worked there had been working there for years he was this guy who was known as the guy who would walk around the office, chat up everybody, help people out. And he seemed to like, he was always on the, on the, on the move in the bank. We're, talk, we're not talking a bank branch, we're talking head office. A big, think of a big office space with all kinds of cubicles. And uh, so he'd walk around and do all this. And you know, his job was to generate reports and charts and so forth for the suits the, the, the executives at the bank so they could monitor whatever they want to monitor. And he did this, but he also managed to be the guy who was walking around with his coffee. Hey, how you doing, man? What's going on? Hey, how you doing, uh, Janet? How you doing, Nicole? You know? And that was fine. But he never went on vacation. He never went on vacation. He was a friend of, a good friend of mine at the time. So one day the guy said, listen, I'm going on vacation, first time in years, but I want you to handle what I do, but you can't tell anybody. So he took my friend to his desk. He says, listen, my job is to generate the reports and the charts and so forth for the, uh, the executives. What they don't know is a few years back, I figured out how to use Excel macros. He wrote all his macros. So all you'd have to do is once a week import all the data instead of manually recreating all these reports and these graphs and these charts and so forth. He would just drop in the data and Excel would automatically generate, generate all his reports and that was it. So he would actually work in reality uh, after written all these macros and so forth, he would work, you know, whatever, 10 minutes uh, a week, something like that, maybe half an hour max. But he didn't want anybody to know, right? Because he, he didn't want anybody to know on top because he didn't want more work. So that's what he did for years. And so there is an example of somebody who uh, at the time, you got to remember, it was early 90s, started looking at Excel macros, which was like black magic voodoo to everybody at that time. And he was able to automate his job. But he didn't, he didn't tell people about it. So that's a funny story. So with new AI-based tools, which are assistive tools, I think they're going to assist developers. They will change what we do as developers. They will not replace developers, but they will speed up the process of development and they will make the code quality uh, much cleaner because you can use the AI to generate all your boilerplate code to maybe look at algorithms and clean them up and stuff like that. AI won't be able to replace developers entirely, not for many years in my opinion, because developers have to work on a whole bunch of disparate systems. They have to consider all kinds of different uh, technologies they can leverage. Then there's the complexity of deployments and maintenance, uh, getting feedback from users, 
and, and, and implementing that feedback, requirement gathering. These are all things that AI will not be able to do for a long, long time, but AI will be able to speed up things. The only thing I would be worried about if I was a, a, one of the rare algorithm writers or one of the rare persons who has to really optimize data structures, um, uh, your job will be sped up considerably. So it was something that might take you five, 10 days to do, you, this thing could probably do in a few minutes, if not a few seconds. Beyond that though, embrace these tools so you understand what they can do for you, what they can't do for you, and uh, then leverage these tools in your own work, whether you're freelancing, working for a company, what have you. This is, uh, it's important that you do that. I've been doing uh, several videos on ChatGPT because I'm looking into it myself, taking my own advice, walking my talk, and I'm gonna be actually introducing uh, modules on this in my mentoring program for the mentees. Because in my mentoring program, it's code-based, you know, we're learning software development, we're learning the web stack specifically, plus some Python. Uh, but uh, the main goal of the program is to, is to level up people as quickly as possible in, uh, you know, just in terms of their own skills and abilities and financial situation. So, you know, code is the base, of course, but I teach uh, personal finance, I see, teach project management, I teach them how to, get, how to get jobs, how to properly prepare for jobs, how to start freelancing. I even have CTOs in my program. Uh, they'll ask me questions about architecture. Uh, they'll say, hey, Steph, you know, we're working on a project and we got technology A, B, and C. We're thinking of leveraging these technologies for these reasons. What do you think? So when you are, especially if you are a freelancer, or entrepreneur, you can't just look at the technologies in terms of their technical uh, computational advantages, if you will. You have to also look at a broader picture. You have to consider them in terms of market. So for example, somebody just yesterday was talking to me about implementing uh, Rust for their application because they wanted to have a, they wanted to have a quicker app. But when I talked to him about his business model, I said, you know, your bottleneck is not going to be the software. It's going to be the uh, execution outside of software. I won't get into details because I don't want to reveal his situation. And I said, when you're looking at Rust, yes, it will be more performant than, say, uh, implementing something with JavaScript or Python, especially Python. But in real life, most users, given what you need, won't see that speed. So yeah, Rust will be able to process something in one one hundredth of a second and Python will do it in half a second, you know? So it's click, it, anybody gonna see a difference really? But the major issue is how many Rust developers are out there versus JavaScript and Python? How quickly and easily can you develop a Rust developer versus a JavaScript or Python or PHP developer? The answer is it's much slower. There's much, you know, much slower to develop these Rust developers. It's not easy apparently, even for experienced developers. And, um, so you're gonna have a harder time finding these people. So to leverage Rust and all its advantages, you have to consider the business considerations. What happens in two years, three years, Rust doesn't take off and Rust developers are extremely rare and your, your technology is based on Rust, you're vulnerable. It's not a good place to be. Anyway, I hope this is useful to you. Yeah, yeah. Embrace new technology, look at it. Um, I have two categories, I have tech of need to nerd technology as in as in need to know so you learn it when you need to know it and the core fundamentals everybody should know those fundamentals gpt using ai to uh, speed up of your uh your processes i think that's moving from the need to nerd into fundamentals i think i'm in it's kind of middle role for me right now but i think i'm pushing it into that category because of the things i just talked about Take advantage of these changes. Don't let huge technological changes scare you. Embrace them and understand therein lies opportunities. People who take advantage of new tech quicker than uh, slower gain advantage. I've seen it a few times before. The smartphone revolution came out. A lot of people came out with uh, apps and, and services associated with this, made big money. Uh, when the web came out, same thing. When people moved from 
pro CGI development as I did into page-based classic ASP development, my productivity shot up quite a bit. So what took the Perl CGI guys a year to do, I could do in 30 days. Embrace the new stuff. ChatGPT is that and other AI engines as well for developers in all aspects of life. And don't worry about it. Yes, certain jobs will fade. Other jobs will be created. So I wrote on Twitter, AI will improve the quality of everything soon enough. We will still need skilled practitioners but their output will be enhanced in ways not seen before. Quality and quantity will explode as a result of AI, ChatGPT in particular. And so this guy writes back to me, Yes, Steph, I already use ChatGPT to massively improve my proofreading. I am often asked to line edit texts by non-native speakers of English to make the text sound more natural. Won't be long before my clients catch on and simply use it themselves. Perhaps, let me tell you, I get a lot of questions from people. Where could, if they just simply Googled it, you know, it's like simple questions. You just Google it and there's the answer right away. A lot of people won't do it. Anyhow, I hope this video is useful. Uh, don't be afraid of this stuff. It's exciting. New opportunities, disruptions, create new opportunities. And history teaches us not only do new technologies create new op opportunities, they tend to create new industries, new professions. Uh, so embrace it. Get ahead of the game and you'll be fine. All right, I'm Uncle Steph. If you want to learn more about me, you can check out the links below, unclesteph.com. That's where I mentor people in the ways of the nerd and a lot more. All right, we're going to do some thumbnails.